This is retired Army Sergeant Garrett Anderson. And this is his bionic hand. Today, we're chopping, dropping, and shocking this hand to see just how durable a modern bionic hand can be. So for these stunts, don't try this at home. We want our bionic hands to be strong enough for our users, and this guy Garrett, he's army strong. But we'll get back to him later. The problem is, most prosthetic hands might not be as strong as you think. Over the years, we've talked with hundreds of clinicians and patients, and the number one thing they complained about was that their $50,000 custom machine steel injection molded prosthetic hand would break within weeks. Not because they were doing anything crazy with it, but something as simple as hitting their hand against the side of a table would break the joints. Often it gets so bad that users just stop using their prosthesis altogether. So it gives. How could these hands be breaking so easily, and what could be changed? That got us thinking, how could we make a hand that was more durable but lower cost to manufacture? Well, with a little bit of 3D printing, silicone, and carbon fiber, this is what we came up with. So, what can this thing handle? Still works. I was expecting more of a reaction out of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, man, it's, huh. yeah, I, I thought you'd, uh, I thought you'd jump a little bit more, but I guess not. You're just doing it so often. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. That was a lot of force, but why was this hand able to take so much impact? The answer is this flexible three printed bone inside the finger. But here to explain it further is James. So the ability hand fingers use a four bar linkage mechanism, which is a simple mechanical assembly consisting of four connected links that move in tandem when rotation is applied to one of them. This allows our fingers to move like real fingers with only one motorized input. Typical four bar linkages use four separate bars connected by four rotating pin joints, but in prosthetic hands, these pin joints can be extremely susceptible to stress and impact damage. Instead, we took a soft robotics approach using a living hinge to connect two of the four bars into one continuous bone made of elastic material with a flexible bending area in the middle. This added compliancy allows the ability hand fingers to withstand a lot more shock, impact, and lateral force without breaking. With a traditional prosthetic finger, when a lateral impact comes in this direction, it hits a pin joint here, and the entire thing is going to break at this joint. Now, with our own natural fingers, right, when you have a lateral impact, the finger flexes out of the way, it has compliance, it goes back to its original position, and that's why it can survive that impact. So we designed our finger to have that same feature where if you hit it laterally, it'll flex out of the way because of the rubber that's in the joint right over here. But to keep it strong and uh, durable, we flanked the distal end of the finger with nylon, and so it can actually hold more than 20 pounds just from the tips. But let's see in what other ways that our hand is durable as well. So what else can we try doing with this? Uh, try standing on it. All right, cool. Here, you hold on to the control stick. Um, I'll, I'll put it on the ground right here and uh, we can try it out. Just be careful not to stand on the thumb because that can only take like 30 pounds. Okay. If you stand on the palm, you should be good. All right, so I'll, I'll try and do this just by staying on the palm. And let's, let's see. Whoa! Okay, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. I think this might be good. All right, let's hook it back up so it'll, it'll uh, recalibrate so all the fingers should uh, move if everything is okay. So far, so good. Awesome. All right, let's see if you can do a power grip. There nice. it is. It still works. Nice. Okay, so, so what was it about this that, that allowed me to be able to stand on the palms? Well, if that was just the 3D printed plastic palms, that definitely would have broken. But that carbon fiber composite shell makes all the difference. Like it's durable and rigid enough that it was able to basically redirect the force of you standing on it around the plastic uh, and into the ground, protecting all the internal components from getting squished. Awesome. So what else can we do? All right, so we're at my dryer at home and we're ready to try out uh, throwing this in the dryer. Here you go, James. And I'm gonna put it on uh, fluff air um, so that, you know this thing doesn't uh, melt. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put it on for 10 minutes and see how it does. Good luck. Whew. 
I'm worried. That's uh, probably harder on your dryer than on the hand. Yeah, I guess I'm more worried <laughs> about the dryer. Yeah, that, you can see it just just rattling. Come back in 10 minutes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it's done. Let's see how it did. All right, let's check this out. Oh, okay. Oh, actually, all the the ball bearings looks like it uh, exploded there, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to attach this. The ball cage fell off. Yeah, yeah, because it broke. Dang. It looks like yeah, right here. So the hand is probably fine. Um, it's just that this uh, the, the this ball cage that holds all the ball bearings in for the wrist connector that ended up snapping and all the balls are actually inside the uh, dryer still. But that's what we need to connect it to this um, the control stick over here. And so yeah, it won't go in without the ball bearings fitting into the grooves. Since this connector is normally covered by the socket, I'm just gonna stick a cap on it. Let's go ahead and put it in there. It's set it to 10 minutes. Let's get this rolling. All right, let's see how it does. <laughs> Come back in 10 minutes. All right, let's check this out. Let's see how it did. Still in one piece. That's good. Let's see if it works. All right, we'll recalibrate the fingers. So far, so good. All right. Nice. It looks like the silicone tore a little bit on the index finger right there, and the carbon fiber definitely got scuffed, but that's purely cosmetic. But yeah, it definitely survived that uh, dryer. All right. Uh, wh why do you think it was able to do that? Uh, well, on top of the compliant finger bones and the carbon fiber shell that we talked about before, a lot of the materials in this hand were selected like specifically to be impact resistant. I mean, we got a compliant joint in the thumb as well. Uh, these drive trains are printed out of tough resin. Uh, we got uh, shockproof and temperature-proof glue on the motors, and we've got this firm yet flexible sealant that's used for waterproofing the palm. I mean, it did get a little bit beat up. You can see that on the carbon fiber. Oh yeah, but that's purely cosmetic. Yeah, yeah. Do you think uh, you think we can like drop it from a height and it'll survive? Yeah, probably. All right, let's let's see. If I, I'm just gonna drop it right here. Whew. Damn. All right, let's see. Bam! <laughs> Still got Look it. At that. Should we try dropping it from the roof? Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, you ready to try this out? Ready. All right, let's see how high up we are. That is just about 14 feet. Just about 14 feet yeah. right here? Okay. Here we go. All right, you want to check it out? Okay. How's it looking? Nice! Still works. All right, let's up the amount. All right. Let's do this. Let's see how high this is. Okay. Got it. Pretty much exactly 30 feet. Exactly 30 feet. Yep. All right, I'm six inches above the roof here. All right, you see the hand? All right. Let's see if it survives. Ready? Ready. Set. Go. <laughs> Woo. Woo. How is it? Still works. What? That's awesome! Yeah! You think we're ready for Garrett? I think so! All right, let's do it! Now we gotta figure out how to get down from here. <laughs> Retired U.S. Army Sergeant Garrett Anderson has tried almost every prototype of the Ability Hand, helping us improve each one. Now, to put it to the test, we're going to bring out the martial artist in him. So Garrett, 
You have been our first user ever in the U.S. of the Ability Hand. Tell us about, you know, how did you lose your hand? How did you get come to start working with us? Uh, I lost my arm in 2005 from an improvised explosive device, an IED in Iraq. I was a soldier in the Illinois National Guard. We were on patrol. And October 15, 2005, uh, we were ambushed, essentially, and a roadside bomb detonated under our truck. I lost my arm below the elbow. I broke my jaw in seven spots. A few years later, after my recovery, going to school, Adil and I got partnered up with the DIA at the University of Illinois, and they're like, hey, you guys work together. We, he needed a right arm amputee, and I was an arm, right arm amputee. So it sort of worked out. And so when Adil approached me about this new project, he was doing building this, this new revolutionary hand, I was all on board. So compared to some of the other muscle-powered hands that you've used, what are some of the frustrations that you've had with those hands? Well, one of the first hands I've used, like, I'm not saying the name at all, but it was it was a very heavy hand. It was very slow and very limited to the, to the features of the grips you could choose. So you had two grip selections, and it was a tri-pinch. So it was open or closed, and that's all the options you had. But all that, it was just the heaviest thing ever. For me, I'm a particularly different amputee because my amputation is so much higher. Weight's a huge issue for me. So the heavier the hand is down here, the harder it is back here in my elbow. So I wouldn't wear that hand because it was just heavy and I didn't like it. After that original My Electric hand that you got that was super heavy, what'd you end up using? I used a, a standard body power hook, uh, which dates back to World War I, World War II era. And so it's just a standard hook, open and close, and you use your shoulders to operate that one. I used that for many years. You can have it the best and the fastest hand, but if you don't have a durable hand, it's, it's a paperweight in my closet, that's all it is. Having the engineers address those issues have been great. For seven years now, we've been working together to, to these, are, these are perfecting the hand. I've been like working on how, how I can break the hand. So uh, just the evolution of, of where we started to what we are now, is in, it's been remarkable and really groundbreaking for me and everybody else involved. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is like, you know, really make this hand super durable. And so, you know, we're trying to like do like crazy things like break boards with it. And is that something you want to try out? Oh yeah. All right, let's go and do it. All right, Gary, you ready to do this? You ready to put this to the test? All right, let's start with some uh, push-ups. Get our, get our hands ready for this. You ready? Knuckle push-ups, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. All right, how are you feeling? I'm feeling solid. You ready to break a board now? Let's break a board. Let's do it. Oh, jeez. I didn't think you were going to actually break it. I thought we were just lighting it oh. up. Sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> you want to try with an ice block? Let's go. All right. Got a nice block here. Let's do it. Yeah! Do you think you can do more? I can do more. How many pieces? Six. We do six. Let's do six. Let's go. Six ice blocks, now!
I'm ready. Feel. It felt good. It's hot. I can feel the fire on my face. Yeah. <laughs> Garrett, that was awesome. How did you feel breaking those boards and breaking the ice? I oh, was a little hesitant. I didn't know that I could actually do it physically. I had trust in my hand, but I didn't know if I could physically do it. But after I like shredded the boards and, and destroyed the ice, it was it was it was awesome. That's so cool. That's so cool. Well, so do you have more confidence that you'd be able to do some of these things now? Yeah, I, and yeah, I do have more confidence. I do more things and the durability alone. But I think it's really cool that the I was able just to bust through three flaming boards is pretty cool. <laughs> this is the bad, the best badass arm that I've had on the planet right now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks everyone for watching. We hope you enjoyed flaming board breaking with a bionic hand as well as crushing through those blocks of ice. Watch here for arm wrestling with a bionic hand and also bottle flipping with a bionic hand and be sure to subscribe to our channel, comment below, and smash that like button.